I want to shift gears a little bit to those patients with cancer, unfortunately diagnosed with cancer, and I think the, the biggest sort of evolution that's happening is our understanding that sightedness, where the tumor arose from, uh, actually matters. Fortunato, why don't you start us off with this and just remind everybody about the trials and the results from those trials that sort of showed yeah. the distinction. So basically we have to remember that uh, uh, colon is a very long organ. Mm -hmm. And so we traditionally call, uh, uh, you know, left, right, uh, what is right, what is left, uh, and what is rectum is still, uh, you know, complex to define, but there is a biology and an embryology behind it. Because basically throughout the colon, the function of the mucosa is different physiologically, and the way carcinogenesis works and develops is uh, considerably different in uh, right side versus left side. We have knowledge of different gene evolution and role and carcinogenesis according to the sideness, but still we lack the global picture. Mm. In other words, we can discuss that um, later, even if we take out the known genes, like you know, RAS genes, BRAF, and whatever we understand is important for the biology of this disease, there is still something lacking in our knowledge, saying the right versus left is different. Now, uh, it's a long time that we knew that prognostically, tumors are rising on the right, where was. Can I interrupt? What, we, we people around this table designed clinical trials. What you mm -hmm. just said is an incredibly important thing. We've known for, what, 10, 15 mm -hmm. years Even longer. That, that right sided colon cancers are worse than left sided. Why weren't we stratifying prospectively in our clinical trials? I, and I, I, that's my biggest self check on us, those of us who designed these studies. Why did we choose to ignore it? Anybody, you, I'm going to pick well, on you say, for that. Say, no, we, we did this thought experiment a couple of days ago when we had a list of nine factors where we would stratify mm. according to these factors, including molecular factors, clinical factors, also sidedness. And of these nine factors, which would you pick to stratify according? And the finding was clearly this differs from the drug, which mm. the drug, the ton would run like. And for sightedness, I'm not so, let's say, I don't see that at risk, because with this binary marker and nearly two third, one third distribution, also statistically, this nicely equals. It, it can, so it you can, don't it have to spend the stratification. Right. That's, I, you'll I don't be able have to, to lose my stratification factor uh, from the statistical power to this factor. But part of me wonders if we had been doing this and looking at it through our development of our 10 drugs in colorectal cancer that we might know different things today. But anyway, I, I, I like your answer that yeah. it, it'll come out in the wash. You don't yeah, have to spend it, statistical it, it, it power. It may be relevant for different drugs, yeah, mm. but for the general, I, for the general um, history of trials, I'm not so sad that uh, we have you know, this. But the initial, yeah. the initial data was actually in the, in the, mostly in the early stages, mm. not in the later stages. And the thought was very simplistic, was that the right takes a longer time to be diagnosed than the left. You present with the symptoms later, and thus it was, it was blamed stage on the timing. So the, yeah, the thought was mostly that it was stage migration. So it didn't get integrated as much as a prospective well, More thought. a problem of TNN rather yes. than biology. Yeah. 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 So I interrupted you. No, I so basically to what happened uh, uh, last year, but it started before uh, also with some preliminary studies on the role of Bevashizumab, mm. was that people asked, started to um, ask if this difference could be translated not only in a different prognosis, but also in a different behavior or the molecular target agents we are usually using in uh, mostly in first line uh, metastatic collateral cancer. So namely anti-GFR monoclonals and bevacizumab as anti-angiogenic uh, monoclonal. So basically what came out in, uh, I will say, in a very cautious uh, uh, consideration was uh, uh, a pooled analysis of uh, all the trials, six trials uh, that was done actually last year in our ASMO Congress in Copenhagen, in which data coming from uh, six trials in which anti-GFR drugs were compared to chemotherapy alone or chemotherapy plus anti-GFR drugs, and three trials were containing the comparator with chemo plus bevacizumab. So w the overall picture was confirming the prognostic difference between left and right, regardless of treatment. And it's not a small difference, right? It's no. like a year, it's year and a half. I mean, it's what, 18 months versus something, 25, So it's a clinically months. evident and clinically meaningful evidence. And then there was a very strong evidence, at least within these six trials, five of them first line trials, one was second line trial that uh, uh, if we consider experimental arm, chemo plus 
uh, either Cetuxium or Panitumumab. On the left side was really superior in terms of overall survival, PFS and response rate to the comparator, either chemo or chemo plus bevacizumab. Whereas on the other side, on the right side, besides being prognostic, was predictive of a lack of efficacy of anti-GFR drugs. From our analysis, we were not able to understand which was the best regimen. Mm. So if chemo alone, there was a trend in favor of adding bevacizumab to chemotherapy, but still another um, strange phenomenon came out that could be un understood by biology was that response rate, mm. even on the right, was slightly in favor of cetuximab or panitumab containing chemotherapy combination. This could say that in RAS wild type patients, maybe there is still a small proportion of cancer cells that are responsive to GFR inhibition, so you have a better response, but that doesn't last too much because then, so is that relevant clinically or not? So this is the question. In most cases, it's not. So for all of those of us who don't spend all their day thinking about colon cancer, let's figure out what this means. So let's say I have a right-sided colon cancer, and I'm going to make this patient have BRAF, RAS, everything is wild type, right? Is there ever a role for using EGFR therapy in that patient? You're teasing us that says maybe there's a response delta there. Um, NCCN is basically saying, no, let's stare away from frontline. Front line. One of the studies in that analysis is the second line mm. study, which shows the same thing uh, with panitumumab. Anybody uh, jump in. If you think you have a right-sided RAS wild type, BRAF wild type, are you ever giving that patient EGFR therapy? Yes, uh, third line. Third line. And the hopes is it, but are you, just, are you optimistic? Are you, are you gonna try it because you don't know better? No, so the, both. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the, the data is pretty suggestive that, you know, these the VEGF inhibitors all work better on the right side. I mean, there's no doubt. And it's not because VEGF inhibitors work better on the right side, but because EGFR inhibitors really do not do as well on the right side. But to the point that was just made, EGFR inhibitors in a small population of patients still benefit those patients on the right side. We don't know which ones exactly. We don't know if there is biology that's changing. Uh, we don't know essentially if we're putting these tumors under pressure from first, second line, and then you get some emerging clones that uh, EGFR yeah. application, something else is happening that may make those tumors a little bit more susceptible. But it doesn't matter. We don't have other chemo options. That's before we get to the other agents we have. I think absent more data, we still have uh, uh, an obligation to put those patients, I think, uh, or, 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 or attempt to try EGFR inhibitors in that setting, since we don't have data that says, one, that we're taking away benefit, two, we also think that some patients may be still so benefit. So later lines therapy. Mm -hmm. Beyond um, second line. I'm sort of with Tony. This is what I'm doing. Anybody got a difference of opinion, Paul? No, I actually wanted to agree with Tony that, I, I mean, we tend to, we, we get fooled a little bit thinking we have an embarrassment of riches of therapies for these patients, even the ones who are completely wild type. But in fact, we run out of therapies, you know, sooner than we would like to. And I think until, even though the prepond I agree that the preponderance of evidence is that the right-sided patients in general don't respond to EGFR inhibition therapy, um, in the absence of lots of other uh, wonderful therapies beyond second line, which we really don't have at this point, I'm still willing to try it on them. But I'm not as hopeful.